Right, let's move on then. So I hit, you've got a classic one here, Dem. So what is your ugly point? My ugly point is online play, but specifically in CS2. Because, oh, oh okay. my God. Oh, my God. Like, like look, online play has always been a problem, right? There's sure. always been, like, match fixing in lower levels. Yep. There's always been, like, cheating, <sighs> online qualifiers and stuff like this. I don't know if it's just the awareness of it has exploded or if there is actually a serious problem. But, like... Like, even down to, in Premier, cheaters are rampant at the top of Premier. I mean, it's um, even implied. I, I've seen some of the clips, mate. Some of these clips from the literal major RMR qualifiers in Europe mm -hmm. look like people are literally using wall hacks. Oh, yeah. No, there are definitely... <laughs> like, some of them <laughs> yeah. Some of them yeah. are ridiculous. There's that one yes. on Mirage where the guy is running around in front of a ramp, just, like, literally waiting until they go back. And then he gets a nade out and runs and throws it at them. Like, it's outrageously obvious. I don't know if it's gotten worse. Because even, like, there are... Just accusations, like I'm not putting weight behind yeah, yeah, them. Sure. This para team who got through to the RMR and who also got a pro league spot. There's a lot of talk around them. Um, you know, we even had like in the open qualifiers, ridiculous stuff like teams thinking they're eliminated. And then like the day after the admins are like banning this cheating team. Like, oh, Koi, right. like Movistar got a lifeline because right. they got eliminated. And then like a day later, the admins are like, oh, we've disqualified them. You're back in. Like it, it just... And the reason I use this as my ugly point is because I think it is really ugly. But at the same time, like part of what is so amazing about Counter-Strike is the amount of like openness we have to our circuit that you can get these like, you know, into the breach style storylines where a team can come through open qualifiers and like make it and, you know, do that like oh, friends and we won. Like they can do that cool storyline. Um, but it is so ugly at the moment. Like there's so many scandalous like stories and clips and stuff that... At this point, is it like a necessary evil or, or should we just like really do our best to ditch online play? It's it's uh, I, th I think for certain levels of tournaments, there just has to be more. There, there needs to we, we need to just put like webcams behind people or something. Honestly, I think the 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 Paris stuff, I saw a few of the clips for that one. And so just remarking on that, like the guy was. One of the players on the team, uh, let me try to find his name. Oh, uh, Camion, just yeah. had these had these clips that Kavem, who's like another tier two European player, uploaded about, and he and he just was missing so badly by timing. Like he was literally reacting to things happening on his screen seconds, seconds, literal seconds after they popped up on his screen, and it's just kind of like, and this team just beat Guild News Eagles to to qualify for ESL Pro League, and it's just like. I see the clips of him being horrible and I'm like, this is, <clears throat> I, I can't explain this at all. Like, it's not even like lag. It's just, it's just literally the worst reaction time I've ever seen in my life. And then there's other. Is it like that one back in the day too? when CLG Ricky had that one on LAN where he was sat there and there was someone on his screen. He was the opera as well. And the coach oh, yeah. had to point like, yeah, that's a guy there killing him. Because <laughs> Richard never stopped going on. That was the greatest one of all time. Like, he's actually yeah, on that's... the screen. Yeah, there were there were just mul multiple instances that that Kavem <laughs> uploaded though that I was like, what is going on here? There were more clips of of them also from from these games versus right. Bad News Eagles and the way that they would peak angles and just kind of like the way they would play defensively or offensively based basically off of like there's no way you could know these things. Right. It just was like a lot of perfect timings. And I will say like some when I watched the first one or two, I was kind of like, this isn't that damning to me. Uh -huh. But then I see more and more, and I'm like. Okay, it's really hard to explain this it stuff. It becomes like you a pattern at a point. Yes, exactly. The the game sense at a point is just unbelievable, and so I, I I'm not going to make an official statement on the team because I mean I didn't I didn't actually watch the demos. I just saw a bunch of sure. evidence put together around them. <laughs> so I I yeah the the online stuff and I I literally played Premier yesterday. <laughs> I played Premier yesterday on stream, and the very I waited 15 minutes for a game, and this guy started just aim hacking, literally in spawn, just killing us instantly every single time, and it was like, oh, okay, and so someone just instantly DC. No, it's it's a it's a problem when you're once above, you're above like 20,000 elo, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it, if you're not running, I don't even know if the do you know do you know Demps is were they playing on face it anti cheat or what for the con for the spot for Pro League. Uh, Pro League, I don't know, yeah, because I know they were using that arc at cross anti cheat for the RMR yeah. qualifiers, but um, I don't know what they were doing for Pro League, no. Okay, well, e either way, yeah, it does it does feel like because the game's new and cheaters are just abundant right now that I don't know if the anti cheats have all caught up necessarily to uh, 
everything people can do yet. At pro level, it seems like radar slash map hacking is like the really big problem at pro yes. level because I think it's it's a little bit easier to hide than looking at somebody through a wall if you're just glancing at a map. Like that's a little bit harder to like see by the way you're kind of moving your crosshair and stuff. Um, and I wonder, I don't know the technicalities of it or if it's harder for anti-cheat to deal with that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, what I would say is, like, first of all, I do think that, like, the fucking Akros thing took way too much flack. Like, are we acting like VAC is fucking sick or something? I don't know why everyone's doing that. Like, what do you think the alternative was, guys? And then also, I'll just throw this in there. The thing I'm also mad disappointed about when I see these clips is, why is everyone so shit at cheating, you fucking morons? <laughs> like, <laughs> the joke is you do have cheats. So all you have to do is play normally 99% of the time and then pick, like, three spots to use it in. And then you get all the upside of cheating without it being obvious whereas like we're saying we're watching clips where like you're just the whole time playing as if like it's fine that you're playing like you don't know we can observe your pov and when we do observe your pov and we have a radar we can see that you have a radar as well you can't and can obviously see that you're moving in as they pull back and when they push in you magically take an off angle like it's too obvious it's actually amazing how bad these people are at cheating in these clips like it's why i always told people you can't really expect that if i say like a pro player cheats it's not going to be like that they're not going to make it blatant the, the difference is the pro player because he actually is good as well he is just only going to like activate it in a 1v2 to just know where the first guy is and then he's going to play it out safe you know like so like that's one thing that's really disappointing is how blatant it is like because as we're saying right this is why by the way as a quick aside that whole Lopa thing of like can you believe they're manually banning people you moron you, literally by your logic if we run a tournament like this with an anti-cheat and the anti-cheat doesn't catch it because it's a new cheat and with our eyes we can see the guy's just hacking his tits off we're supposed to go well hands up it'd be wrong for us to step in and ban the that's what every tournament in the history of counter-strike that's an online qualifier does by the way because it leads into my second point which is one thing they do for these tournaments that they kill themselves with every time is we act like all online qualifiers are like uni uniformly important here's what i don't get if it's like the iem qualifier for sydney demps right and it's like some sort of okay mid-sized i get it if that lasts two days and if there's a fuck up on day one we've just got to finish it so if it goes till 6 a.m it doesn't matter in two days we've got like you know we might be a pro league group or there might be a blaster there's no time in the shit when it's the major we're only gonna have two of these a year can we add like two days buffer either side on yeah, like the major yeah, quality yeah. you know what i mean because then because then as you're saying the problem has always been even if i catch the cheater even if i manually review and see that they're cheating and remove them what then happens to everyone they beat in the bracket that's always the problem isn't it because essentially yeah, there is no fun. there's no way to help those people even if you give one of them like the last one they beat the next spot you still fuck over the three people they cheated before so i would say first of all for the majors is it only happens two times a year add a couple of days so that if we need to like you know have a bit of breathing room we can do it it's important enough and then the other thing to me that's obvious is because i actually follow as a fan the sport tennis tennis nailed all these problems years ago guys if you're like a top 100 player you don't have to go to a qualifier to go to wimbledon you get one of the seeded spots because the circuit is based on all the other tournaments accumulate your ranking and then you get your spot so my point is this it's not that it has to be all a massive rmr online or all a giant online open tournament we can have tears to this surely like Maybe if you're a totally brand new team with no core and no ranking, you do have to go into a pure online qualifier with everyone, with Smoothie and his pals and Maui and some cheater in America. Maybe you have to go into the one that anyone can play. But why the fuck, for example, would like some like fucking 29th best team in the world have to play against cheaters and run a crazy... Essentially, they have to just hope that not one person fucks them up with this bullshit as they go through... Just to get to the normal tournament, like that person to me... Maybe they don't go straight to the RMR and pick the 29th team here, so it wouldn't be like an obvious team that you'd invite. But there's got to be, can't there be like a tier between? Like, an obvious one to me would be, if you're someone like ESL who runs a big aspect of the circuit, can't you take like one of those challenger events and make that sort of like a half RMR where it's like you take like, you know, teams 30 to 60 and then they qualify into this and then from there you go three spots to an RMR. It's like, Essentially, any any additional adding of LAN or separation of the best teams from the obvious cheaters is the way to go to me. Because the other thing that's outrageous is that it's one thing if some team, like that one that just said they had to disband because they didn't have any money debts, like Ixar, what the fuck? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right? When they do that, guys, they're doing that for attention. Obviously, we all know they wouldn't have been at the RMR and they would never get a fucking sticker anyway. But the difference is, I, I think it sucks when they get fucked over, but it's not the end of the world. They weren't going to do anything at the major. The real problem with this is you will absolutely 
absolutely get real teams that could have been like an outside chance to make the major just get fucked in this online qualifier and for what did it like that's not real counter strike that's not the counter strike they were going to play at the major and in, in this and also there's the other reason in my opinion why i would also tear it is it sounds counterintuitive but actually the teams that are like 280 in the world play such radically different counter strike it actually can be hard to win against them i know it sounds so weird to a fan but that that's not really what those guys train for so what we tell them essentially depths is train every day of your life playing against astralis fucking navi phase train the proper meta watch all the demos all the smoke and then now for the qualifier for the world championship the most important tournament you have to go and play bill and ed down the street who don't even know any of that and therefore all their wrong moves could actually fuck you up counterintuitively and maybe uh, like cause the greatest upset of all time yeah no 100 percent. well i was just thinking it was um just on your point about like the difference between the meta at the top and in lower tier cs um people always used to say that's why it was so hard playing against the bulgarians like 500 or fiend or whatever they were is because you know they there was no fucking they would just spread out in a default five players on t side and then they would pick one like let's say one uh, clock goes one minute all five of them peak you just all five of them just walk out and take a duel and it's so hard to play against because like it's so different radically from the meta you're playing when you're playing against the top teams so I agree with you. It's not only that you have to deal with potential cheaters or you have to deal with potential like fuckery, you know, the tournament fucks up and you have to play your qualifier at like 4 a.m. or something. But also, yeah, if you play against one of these actually fairly decent tier two teams with like or tier three even with like good mechanics and shit. Yeah, they can fuck you on a bad day. And when it's best of one, like, yeah, you know, like heroic, for example, having to like fucking grind through these online qualifiers and pray that you get the fucking the glorious run where you don't play cheaters and you don't play some tier three team that fucking took all their adderall this morning like <laughs> here's the sad thing that wouldn't have been as shocking if he didn't just like leave that as the last word there it almost yeah, sounded yeah, like I he was should. dropping that like a bomb all their adderall yeah. this morning <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, that was just that was. No, it's no, all good. Sorry, comment. Know, no accusations. No specific accusations. It's all good. It's all good. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content. Well, subscribe to this channel, then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.